In Charles Darwin's day there was plenty of evidence to suggest that life had changed radically over time, but little to indicate that evolution had been seriously disrupted by major extinction events that wiped out a huge percentage of all life on Earth. Yet, as we now know, the growth in the overall diversity of life has suffered several major setbacks, especially at the end of the Permian period 251 million years ago, after which recovery took the best part of 100 million years. There have been at least five mass extinctions in the last 540 million years. Much effort has been expended on searching for their causes because there is no reason why one should not happen again. The most famous extinction event, at the end of the Cretaceous period, was marked by a meteorite impact and volcanic eruptions. Although many other impacts have been found, none can readily be linked to extinction events. The most common factors in mass extinctions are large-scale eruptions of lava and volcanic gases, and the absence of oxygen in the oceans. Volcanic gases, especially carbon dioxide, are connected with short-term regional warming, medium-term acid rain, ozone depletion, and long-term global warming. This atmosphere-ocean link is the most likely reason for mass extinctions, including those in which impacts played a role and where glaciation was a factor. Since the end of the 19th century, it has been shown that the history of life has included evolutionary booms as well as busts of catastrophic extinctions alongside a more gradual background of species origination and extinction. The most famous bust episode occurred at the end of the Cretaceous period. It resulted in the extinction of dinosaurs, various marine reptile groups, flying pterosaurs and various invertebrates, and has been linked to a major impact event and volcanic activity. However, an even greater extinction event, at the end of the Permian period, saw the extinction of up to 96% of marine species, 70% of terrestrial vertebrate species, and 83% of insect genera. An earlier mass extinction, at the end of the Ordovician, coincides with a rapid fall and rise in sea level realted to ice cap growth and melting. The fossil record provides evidence of mass extinctions but also of the subsequent recovery of life. For example, coral reefs were particularly affected by the end Permian extinction. Their collapse had a major impact on oceanic food chains, but new skeleton-forming corals evolved, slowly re-establishing reef structures. Similarly, the collapse of terrestrial ecosystems at the end of the Cretaceous at the end of the Cretaceous period is marked by the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs, yet the recovery of vegetation is evident from fern spores, plants adapted to survive the environmental disaster. Since the last glacial maximum, most of Earth's larger land animals have disappeared, except those that remain in Africa. It was thought that a changing climate led to the demise of cold-adapted animals such as the woolly mammoth, woolly rhinoceros and giant deer. However, recent dating shows that their extinction coincided with the arrival of modern humans in various regions. Similarly, the New Zealand giant moa did not become extinct until one or two centuries after the arrival of modern humans, around 1250. However, climate change may also have played a role in some areas. The woolly rhinoceros, lived in Ice Age North America and Eurasia. It became extinct 10,000 years ago, after humans arrived. Today, amphibians are particularly vulnerable to extinction. Discovered in Costa Rica's mountainous tropical forest in 1966, the golden toad has not been seen since 1989. 